Gadget UK here again. Um, as you can see, this time I'm looking at a Lagrange point here for the Famicom. Um, now, I bought this recently. I'm going to convert it um, because this, an English translation has been done for this. Um, you can play this on the overdrive. There is a mapper uh, support for it now, but it doesn't, it's not fully implemented. It doesn't support the Konami VRC7, I think. Um, so, hopefully, if I can get inside this, I can swap out the ROM. Um, with the uh, translated English version that's out there. Um, I'm just not sure how you get inside these. And it, you can hear it flapping a bit, I'm not sure. There's probably a battery, uh, I suspect, because it's battery backed up this game. So I might need to swap out the battery on there as well. Um, so in order to get inside this, I think it's one of these where it's press fitted, you know, you can, if you press it a certain way, you can separate the two halves, but it needs to be careful because I don't want to damage the label. Um, <coughs> I will keep the original chip that I'm going to take off. Well, hopefully it's not one of those like, blister type chips or something on there. Hopefully it's just a dip dip 32 or a dip 28 or something. Um, so I, I think you can use a 27C040 from what, what I've read. I think it's pin compatible with the chip that's on there. So I'll try and get in this now um, and I'll give you an update in a minute. So I just thought I'd show you the game running in Japanese first, as it is with its original mask ROM. Uh, you can hear the music there from the sound chip uh, on board, it's quite cool. Let's see if we can skip this. No, you can't skip the intro. Anyway, I'll try and get it open now to try and get access to the ROM. Well, it was more difficult than I expected. What you have to do, uh, can you see the clip? here um, so it clips obviously into the bottom piece so you've got to push the, the, this piece up sort of that way and pull this piece down that way you know so they're opposing each other in order to pull this catch away from the inner edge of here and then once you get one side out uh, reverse it try and widen the thing yourself as you try and do this side and just the, the, the fact of you, you can widen it on one side like this makes this side come out a lot easier uh, so as you can see that's, that's out now there's a clip at the back as well don't you? you can see it just down there so at the moment it's in position I don't want to break it uh, I will need to sort of try and minute massage that back out in order to get the board back out but um, if you don't lift it too high you know sort of keep it let's see if we can just unclip it now just give me a sec there we go if you if you have it about that angle like that you can get the um, card out uh, or the cards I should say you know the PCB without putting a crease in your label here so it should all go back together and once I've cleaned it up uh, it'll look alright this that's just dirt uh, just dirt there down the sides there's no marks or anything I've not had to prise it apart so that's quite good so as you can see here's the PCB you've got the Konami VRC7 chip here it's a dip uh, looks like 40 pin it might be 42 pin actually that's quite large uh, it probably is or 44 pin even um, yeah don't quote me I see the pin one marking on it but anyway you've got the battery here as well CR2032 uh, soldered on there I've measured it as 3.3 volts so for the moment I'm gonna leave that on there it should be okay for a while uh, at some point I will need to perhaps come back here and swap it out um, Got a little, uh, some, uh, a little uh, wet type electrolytic there, 6.3 volts, 100 microfarads. Uh, that's going to be all right, probably. Um, not a lot else, really. I'm not sure what this little um, hybrid is down here, um, or this little chip down here, actually. No idea, but I think this is a RAM, Fujitsu 8464. That's probably the save RAM, I would think. Um, I'm not sure what that is. That's uh, curious another Konami chip there um, it could be the ROM actually that might be the ROM chip that we need to replace thinking about this um, and then down here we've got an LH5160 which is another RAM that might be the save RAM I could have these around the wrong way I'm not sure which one of those is going to be the save RAM which one's like VRAM um, it's probably not called VRAM it's probably something else you know it, it's pages in graphics and things into the RAM I'm pretty sure um, but yeah, the PCB is looking pretty clean. Um, so I'll work out which chip it is. I think it's probably that one's going to be the ROM. Um, and we'll program up a 27C040 with a translated ROM. Um, get it on there. And hopefully it should work. Like I, say, I think it's supposed to be pin compatible. So I don't think I need to, should need to change anything there. So they're really easy to get the chips off these boards. It really is just as a case of simple, you know, simply heating a pin. Just use you to solder pump that. Um, they look a bit messy now because there's just bits of flakes of solder on there once I brush that 
will come off really easily. Um, but the nice thing with these is because it's usually single layer PCBs, the chips come off really, really super easy. By the time you've done that second row there, the chip will pretty much just fall off of its own accord. So just a single pass there. I've not revisited any of those pins. They all look uh, pretty good actually in terms of uh, being detached. So if I just gently just give this a bit of a, there you go, you can see it's just come straight off. Uh, which is what I suspected. You might don't force it off just in case you've got uh, just one pin. There you go, that snapped off on that corner. That's it, done. So I can get the 27C040 on there now and we should be ready to test, I think. Sorry, you zoomed in quite close here. If you look at these, the ROM, this is the ROM I took originally, it's the .NES format. Um, and if we look at the properties of it, uh, let's see if we can get this on the shot. Hopefully you can see that. It's 524304 bytes in size. That's because the .NES file format's got like a 16, well, at least a 16 byte header. It can have a trainer in there as well, I think. Um, so all I've done is open it in hexa, hexa this here. Uh, I'll show you, if I just zoom up to the top here, you can see the first byte should start on this particular version of the ROM I've got here, 00AD. If I control Z that, it'll put the head, it, well, it's not doing it, actually. I was gonna say it'll stick the header back. If I open the original file, I'll show you again. Um, yeah, so this original file here has got this 16 bytes uh, along the top, that, that first row, right up to the last zero there, I can't highlight the damn thing. So we can do it with the keyboard. Why can't I select that last byte? There we go. So it's that first 16 bytes there which begin HE45531A which corresponds with the text you can see over here in ASCII, uh, NES, that's the NES header. So if you just remove, if you just sort of select that whole first row like that and you hex editor, hit delete, generally the way they work is let's say it'll just it'll cut it and shift everything up. So that should be okay now. So I've saved that file. If we look at the file size of that one now, if we just zoom here, you'll see the size now is 524288, which is exactly 512K. So if I load the, um, I'll select the device in my EPRAM program software here, it's for 27C040, which is what I've done. Um, we can now just simply just load that ROM into the buffer uh, and then click program. So let's just do that. I'll change the filter there because it's probably got a .NES extension still just because of the way I saved it. So it's that one there with no header, click open, binary, yeah we don't want to do anything with it, we don't need to swap in the end or anything like that. Um, and then we should be able to hit right. So as soon as that's done I can get that on the board and uh, give it a try. So you might need to bend the legs in a bit, put it on a flat surface and just, uh, you know, bend them so that they're totally 90 degrees perpendicular with the package. Because the, sometimes they're spread, you know, um, it's a bit hard to explain. Uh, the, you know, if you look at the profile there now, they're all going straight down, but because this was a brand new chip, they were sort of out at that angle, you know, spread. So if you just, uh, let's say, put them on a flat surface, not like this, this is rubber, but on a table or something, just edge it like that gradually you can make sure they're totally flat so I'll get that on there now uh, that's okay just make sure they're all through and it's nice flat solder it on and we'll try it So I've not cleaned the flux off yet, I'll do that in a minute. Um, I've inspected it to make sure I've not got any shorts, and obviously I need to cover the EEPROM window up there, although it will be contained within the cart uh, shell, so it's not a big problem. But I just thought I'd show you, if you can test it like this, exposed face forward, with the chips face forward on this particular board. Switch it on, uh, point at the screen, you can see straight up there, which is good, uh, no issues. Hit start, you can see it's in English there, new. Uh, Not sure what all that crap is at the top there, maybe it's just not uh, perfectly translated and got a bit of a bug there. Let's just clear that. And so, yeah, I would say that's working. Uh, let's just, I'll move the camera up because you're getting quite a lot of light glare actually there from that angle. You can see it's in English now. 
I'm not sure if that was in English before, actually. I can't quite remember. No, I think that was in Japanese. It's probably because I'm confusing myself because I think I've tried this on the Everdrive just to see if it works. Uh, and it does, but uh, yeah, sorry about that glare. It's not either. The sun's just at the wrong angle. But yeah, that's working. So I think I'll clean the PCB up now and uh, reassemble it. So the way I normally just clean these up is with a cotton bud with some IPA first of all. Um, now you will get uh, sort of strands of cotton if you don't use lint free like I do. Um, but this is just the preliminary, preliminary pass. I'll give it a brush in a minute with some IPA. I pour a cap of uh, isopropyl all over there. Um, but I always do it this way first just because you get majority of the, the flux off this way and then you've not got tons of flux and the residue leaking all over the place once you um, pour some on in a minute. You'll see what I mean? Um, I'll do this bit now. Probably give it a couple, couple of passes there. Actually, if you stick some more IPA on there and just push it down like that. And then just inspect it, I guess, just make sure there's no flecks of solder that haven't uh, come off with the brushing and stuff there, because sometimes you do get the odd particle of solder. The rest of it will evaporate of its own accord. Um, yeah, it's starting to evaporate now, and you can see that's, uh, that's pretty clean, that's not too bad. We've got a big blob of solder on one of the connections there, but actually that's, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, just dry this end. Off with a tiny bit of uh, paper towel here, um, and then we'll get something to cover that EEPROM window up. So the PCB is back in there, foot chips facing upwards towards us, towards the label. Um, now it's one of these glossy labels, so just a bit of uh, soap and water. This is just like mixed washing up liquid I just use on things like this. Don't use IPA or anything like that because you'll probably, or even plastic cleaner because you might pull the uh, colour off the label. But yeah, yeah it's got a glossy uh, protector on it, so I'll just give that a gentle wipe like that. Uh, clean up this uh, surrounding edge of the plastic here as well, I think. not too bad that actually it's, it's pretty clean I think the sellers actually cleaned it up as you can see the original label on top there without a crease now this is um, not got a glossy covering so you just need to be really gentle when you're wiping over that because you could uh, pull the ink off if you're not careful always inspect when you're doing something like this if you just touch it gently and just inspect just to make sure you're not pulling any ink off um, and we'll just clean the back up a similar way really that has got a glossy label on the back there so that's okay. Well done. Sometimes with things like this where it's kind of like uh, embossed or whatever it is, you know, it's sunk, counter sunk into the plastic there, just using a little brush at different angles and you'll get any bits of dirt out of the little grooves and slots. Um, and then just give it a gentle wipe um, and you should be done. That looks good as new. Um, and it's the same thing where you get little gaps on the sides. If you ever get dirt and stuff in the sides of things like controllers and cars, so you're wondering how to get it out, just use a brush, an L brush like this, just gently on the side. And you, within a few strokes like this, it'll just clear out the little slots there and you'll get any bits of dirt out of there. Anyway, we're all done. So 
this was filmed a few days later, I thought I'd share some of my thoughts with you actually about my uh, you know opinion of this game. What it's like, is it good, is it worth the money, etc. Um, and I would say um, it's good, but it's not what I expected at all. It's actually pretty difficult. Um, for example, I've got three in my party at the moment, and you'll find that, uh, you know, it's like, I'll just put in all the time, it'll just get them to automatically attack. You, when you get to certain points in the game, um, and it's quite regular actually, as you get to each new area, the difficulty cranks up so much that uh, you will inevitably get killed, your party get killed, and then you'll respawn back to the last point you saved. And I would say the one annoying feature that ties in with that, as you can see, you don't get to move very much before you get a, a random battle so you can't avoid them it's not like you can see anything on the map to avoid take a different route etc you just get these battles so they're very frequent and the gap that I had there actually between the, the previous battle wasn't too bad sometimes you, you can move less than about a quarter of a screen and you're straight into a battle again um, now my party at the moment needs to get this is where i need to go i need to go down this tunnel here i think um, Get where I'm going now. Is it down that way? Yes, it is down the floor. And I need to get through this area, but it's so damn hard. Look, you can't even get to the lift before having a battle. So this keeps happening. That's not too bad. There's only two enemies there. But uh, the point is, you, you can't move very much before you get into an automatic battle. And because the difficulty cranks up, let's say, for each new area you get to, inevitably you end up dying. Doesn't matter what equipment you've got, doesn't matter what kit you've got. Um, or tactics, so you end up having to replay the same bit two, three, or four times until eventually, you know, you've leveled up as you get as you get to that, you know, to get through that area kind of thing. So there is a lot of, like I say, dying and retrying. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going here now. I think it's because this is a new bit. I've not. Oh God, here we go. This is a new area. You know, I'm trying to get my way through, but you know, ultimately I just keep dying. My health's not too bad here, but those two rabbits are going to kick my ass now. Let's just see. Yeah, they do a lot of damage, I think. Okay, not doing too bad this time. Oh, so one of the characters ranked up there, that's good. Level 11. And there's no map or anything, so you've got to. Oh, golly, we go again. You've got to just, uh, you know, go off memory and stuff. And that's another annoying feature, actually. Sometimes these battle scenes come up so damn quick, like that one. If you're not thinking about, if you're not remembering where you were on the previous screen, which direction you were going in, you can confuse the hell out of yourself, which I guess is a common thing with these types of RPG. But I mean, look at my health now, my health's pretty low because I'm fighting you now four of these damn things and my health you know, is low from previous battles. And I am playing in automatic mode here, but it does work quite well with the auto mode. It will heal you know, various characters and things when it needs to. But I've got the feeling I'm going to die. There you go, Gene lost. And it respawns us now back where we were where I started that, that, you know, when I first started talking about this particular bit of the game. So you can see, you know, yeah, there's a lot to like about it. The character is there, you know, the charm, the animation isn't the same. The story's pretty good so far from what I've seen. The graphics and sound uh, really make this. But it's a bit repetitive in the sense that, uh, like I say, you have to keep going around in circles until you level up. Level up. And, you, you know, that that single thing there, with, when it goes into battle, oh my god, look at that, four enemies. Those three are quite hard as well, those screen things. I wouldn't be surprised if they just like wipe me out. I haven't done too bad there, so I'm taking one of them down. But the frequency of the battles, I think, are the thing that really had a negative um, taste like, in the mouth, I think, for this game. Really, is that it's just it's too much battle that you can't avoid. That's the one thing I would say that's negative about it. Um, I can't even move a screen's distance without having a battle again. I mean, it's probably just as annoying as, uh, you know, PR Solar on the Mega Drive and Dreamcast and stuff. 
it's very similar in terms of the annoyance there, the battles. You know, you can't move very much and you're into a battle again. Um, but at least with Pierre Solar, you've got more of a chance with this. It's almost like you're guaranteed to die. You're just going to keep dying over and over again until you get to a certain, uh, let's say, level and capability. And then, then you'll be all right getting past that area. Let's see if we can do it this time. Oh, poison there, that's what that flashing is, that white flashing. Let's see if I can heal my characters. The translation's not bad actually on these menus, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, oh god. I don't want to equip, I want to use. Uh, is it text? Yeah, who do we need to HP restore? Chris is dead. Can't do that because he's dying, I think. I'm going to do Dennis. Again, for about the fourth time, let's uh, recover. Again, this is about the fifth time now. Oh god, does it let me move three feet before a battle? And actually, it seems like the more health and stuff you've got, the more likely it is to just go straight into a battle again. Thank god we got to that point. But we're probably going to die in here again. You'd be amazed. It's like saying you don't, you don't need to travel very f many screens at all to just find you dead again and back to the, you know, the respawn point. And the other thing is, once you die. It doesn't give you any points for, you know, credits for killing the enemies you've just fought. So there will come a point where um, I'll have no money left and I won't be able to recharge my health. And I guess the only option then is to maybe go back to um, easier areas of the game, maybe to farm credits or something if that's possible. Hopefully I might get past it this time. Yeah, one of the ones levelled up there, so we might, this might be the you know, the sixth attempt here or something, and I've probably done this about six times previous to this actually, off camera. Oh god, please let me just get to the next bit. Now I'm not sure which way I'm going because I've never gone past the screen. Let's try going down. Oh, four! See, Jean's health is pretty low already, so I think this is probably, if it doesn't end here, it's going to end very soon thereafter. Take that last one down. We're back again. So there you go. That, you know, my opinions of this game are, it's good, but it's bloody hard and bloody frustrating at certain points. Um, when you're not dying repeatedly like this and just have to try and keep doing the same route over and over and over and over again until you level up, it's a good game. 
but that, that I would say is the biggest flaw with it and uh, it's going to dictate whether it's worth buying to you, I mean I paid about roughly just under £30 for this from the US, uh, sorry from Japan, uh, so do I feel happy paying £30 for it, well not really, I think if it would have been around the £15-£20 mark I'd be happier, £30 you know and then you've got to convert it yourself. Um, yeah, there's probably better RPGs out there, I would say. Anyway, thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.